All right, you folks, back here on the ball. Smash your friend of the show, Coach Rob Jones, Norfolk State Spartans, and me at Champions from 2021 here with me, Coach Jones. How's life up there, in Norfolk, man? Hey, what's up, man? What's going on? Is, is everything's okay. I hear that, man. Uh, I know we talked about this time last year. A lot of uncertainty was going on around with COVID. So tell me this, man. How was it? How fulfilling was it for you for your team to win 17 games in the COVID year, probably the hardest year of your coaching career to win 17 games and win a game in, in the big dance as well? Uh, you know, it was trying uh, a lot. You know, it was a lot of different factors. You know, of obviously, like you said, the pandemic was a huge factor. Um, just kind of keep everybody's mental state in a good place uh, was a was a huge factor. And um, probably I probably learned to have more patience as a coach than I normally do have because of a situation that we were in. No doubt. And, Coach, you know, the mental health piece of it is so important. Let's kind of go, go deeper in there to how did you all kind of approach the guys mentally because I know we're going through a pandemic, the testing is trying, uh, having to be always be on edge about where you do what you do, how you do it. So how did you and your staff kind of keep your guys mentally sharp all year long so they wouldn't let that break them down pretty much? I mean, we had a lot of different talks with them. Um, a lot of different talks with them, you know. So uh, just trying to keep them – keep them in a good in a good place. Um, I think that one thing that we did do, uh, we couldn't have a lot of um, team outings because of everyone trying to be, you know, cautious about COVID. So actually it probably forced us to have more communication even than normal with them through like text messages and like, um, you know, platforms like this, like Zoom and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it probably forced us to even do more, you know, of a personal touch last year than it would in, in previous years. Most definitely. Like you said, Coach, you know, I know this spring had to be refreshing because you actually had guys, you had camaraderie working out together, you know, because uh, I know last year that camaraderie piece was only time you got it was really on, on, the, on the practice floor pretty much, like you said. So this year, spring, getting to work out with the strength coach together, go through workouts together this summer as well while I was on campus. So talk about how good it was having you guys to beat the bond even more this year. Uh, you know, at first it, it was, I can't say weird, but it was like, uh, different because, you know, we didn't have summer school last year. So, um, and obviously we had a pretty solid season. So it's kind of like um, trying to just get back to what do we want to cover in, in in our summer sessions and our summer workouts. Um, because honestly, you know, we had to cover everything and, you know, in a short period of time last year. And like I said, it worked, you know, it worked out pretty well. So just trying to find a balance of, um, you know, overdoing it. Because um, maybe less is more, you know, maybe – uh, you know, I know they opened up the summer to us, um, you know, with, with the full team workouts a couple of years ago and things like that. As far as, you know, I know before it was like groups and stuff like that. You would have, you know, four man groups and that stuff like that. And I do full team stuff, um, you know, four or five years ago. But it was like, it's, it's less more, you know, like, do we, uh, what do we do during the summer? You know, do we, um, do we go like full tilt and then they're worn out when it comes down to, to, to you know, to really win? Or do we, uh, you know, just kind of just lay down our basic foundation and just build from there? So, um, you know, we've been trying to just lay down that foundation and, and understand that this is going to be a, obviously back to normal and, and quotes, you know, a longer season than it, than it was last year. You know what I'll tell you is, man, I enjoy watching you against App State, man. I, I was like, I was like cheering, cheering as hard as I could for you. I saw you guys got the win. I, and people got to see how good of a coach you actually are. Because probably people don't see the MEAC ball the way I do. Like who covers it? Like the way I do. So get on that platform. Get Norfolk State and people, people's mouths. See how your guys follow that game against App State or some belt school and get that win and go up against Gonzaga. I know you didn't get the, the results you wanted, but still be on that platform to put Norfolk State on the map. People know about this great university up there in Virginia. I mean, that's been my, my biggest plight, I think, as a, as a, as a head coach, um, you know, of getting getting us back to the NCAA tournament. Um, I think when I first got the job as an assistant coach, my biggest thing was to figure out how to contribute to, to, to get, you know, the right pieces and, and do what I got to do uh, as far as X and O help to get us to the tournament. Because I know the school had never been to the tournament before. So it's like I kind of checked that box as an assistant coach, you know, and then, like, I said, when I got the head coaching job, my job is to try to get us back to the tournament, you know, and – the, between the, the seven years in between the two appearances, you know, it was a lot of uh, success, you know, with different things, you know, a couple regular season titles and, you know, a lot of wins and a high win percentage and things like that. But it was like the final, um, the final check to get back to the tournament, you know, for me. And um, it was like almost like a, like a 
a little weight off your shoulders, you know, it's like, you know, you got, you know, you got to, you know, we got back there, you know, and um, now it's about, for me now it's about how do we stay longer, you know, um, what do we got to do to stay longer in the tournament? So like, that's like the next uh, thing level of uh, everything. I mean, we all know it's hard to get to the tournament, with the, you know, with one bid leagues, you know, every one bid, not just the me, like every one bid league, which is probably, uh, you know, 20 out of 32 conferences is one bid leagues. So every one bid league is hard to get to the NCAA tournament. Um, so that's hard enough, but I just try to think about the next level. Like, what can we do to stay longer? Like, what do we have to have in place? What do we have to do better to stay longer in, an, in the NCAA tournament? Well, I think you got a good formula because you're, you're older. You have an older roster. I feel like when you were a one big league school having an older roster against those young, those younger power five teams haven't got good experience to me. And you have that on your roster this year. Can't help you stay longer, in my opinion, coach. Yeah, well, I hope you're right. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> we're going to try to stay as long as we can stay. You know, if the tournament goes all the way to April, we want to stay until April, you know, if possible. Um you know, so we're going to try to do what we got to do. You know, obviously the first step, like I said, is to get back. But at the same time, in that quest to get getting back, it's also us trying to, um, you know, put in different things in our foundation and uh, and our and throughout the year to make sure that we stay longer when we get back. And how cool was seeing two HBCU schools take themselves and yourselves winning the tournament? I think it's the first time it's ever happened because usually, which I know, which the pattern was, they'll, they'll put you all against each other. They may have to swag and play each other in that play in game. That used to be the game plan back in the day. So I was happy to see both of you all win. And I, I just wish that they wouldn't have always put you all in the play in game. But I know it helps y'all get some money to win when you win that play in game as well. But how cool to see both of you in Texas other than swag and swag. You guys have been representing me. I get a win in that tournament this past year here. Yeah, well, it's a twofold thing. Like you said, you know, um, sometimes the playing game is looked at disre as disrespectful. And, um, you know, because, like, HBCUs are kind of always in it. But, uh, you know, there's other conferences that are, that are in it a lot, too. You know, but, like, because uh, like, even when we when we went to 2012, we weren't in the playing game. We were 15 seed when we beat Missouri. You know, um, I know there was a time that North Carolina Central was a 14 seed. And there's been a couple other MEAC 15 seeds and, and stuff like that. So, um, we're not, you know, contrary to probably popular belief, we're not always in it. Maybe we're just in it a little bit more than others, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, but also, like you said, on the flip side is that, um, you know, you're able to, to, to one, whoever you play in that play-in game, you probably can beat, you know, and, and that's the thing that people don't, don't see. So, you know, you actually get to experience the tournament a little longer and for the school, you know, they get a little extra uh, financial uh get back because every round is some more money for the for the school and for the program so um it has its pros and cons i think uh, of it and and as far as us and texas southern both getting to win i think it, it was just like perfect timing because it was like i know last year was a very sensitive time you know with, with everything racially and stuff like that um so to see two black schools get wins in the NCAA tournament was like just like the perfect storm it was like you know, we're just trying to show you that, you know, we can do anything that you can do type thing, you know, and uh, we've always known that, but just to see it on a, on a good, on a, on a major platform uh, with, with Johnny Jones and those guys and, uh, and us getting in the win to it, to advance um, was, was, was great for, I think, HBCU basketball. And I kind of mentioned this a little earlier. Um, so who are some guys on, on your roster that I fans should watch out for? I know I said you have a veteran roster, a lot of juniors and seniors on the roster there. So, you know, a lot of guys are a little older. Tell us some guys we should look out for as we watch your team and, and we will cheer for you the Spartan this year in the MEAC, man. <laughs> I think uh, Joe Bryant, um, you know, he had a good uh, end of the season last year. He had, at the beginning of the season, he was like maybe preseason second team or something like that or whatever it was. But he got hurt. Um, during the preseason, he never really gained, regained his form until probably about 10 games into the season. So he really finished up strong. I mean, he had 30 in the MEAC tournament against Central. You know, he had a 15 or something against Morgan in a championship game. He was most uh, outstanding player in the MEAC tournament. Um, he had a, a good game against App State. I forgot exactly how much he had against App State. But um, he's a guy that we're looking forward to, like, taking the next step. Um, you know, it's like, I guess he's a senior, but, you know, not really a senior because everybody kind of got their – the year back last year. So, oh, yeah. So I guess he's a junior. I mean, I, I, like, you know, like I said, everybody was able to reclass in college <laughs> last year, you know. So it was like, so I guess he's a junior. You know, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what he, I just noticed this is his fourth year. And with his fourth year, you know, you got to take another step with leadership, uh, playing, of course, 
And uh, we look forward to him, him having a good year. And then, you know, we got um, some other guys, uh, Tyrese Jenkins, Daryl Anderson. You know, we look for those guys taking us up in their career. Uh, we got some good transfers with uh, Dana Tate, um, Christian um, Bankston from Ox, Oxa Little Rock. Dana came from uh, Rhode Island and Siena. He, he made a quick stop there. Um, he was a former four-star player. Um, so, you know, we look for, for him to contribute, you know, a lot for us as well. Um, you know, we got Christian Ings uh, from, from Ryder, which would be a pretty good player. And um, Jalen Hawkins, who um, who had 24 points against Appal- Appalachian State in the um, – NCAA tournament, I know everyone was like, where did he come from? You know, like, where did this guy come from? Yeah, because he got 20 at half or something like that, you know? Oh, yeah, he was on fire that night. Yeah, so, but um, he was a double-digit scorer for us, but he just came off the bench, you know, but that game, he just really kind of just went, you know, went nuts that game, you know, and, and, and had a very, very big game. So we look forward to him taking another um, step, too. I mean, so, so, you know, the whole the whole team, we just look forward to, like, those guys kind of gelling. Right now, this is, like, the the fun but frustrating part of coaching because it's like, you know, you get a chance to kind of, um, you know, you get a chance to mold the team, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, it, it's not the shape you want <laughs> right away, but you got to keep molding to get the shape that you want. The main thing is if it molds right in March, doing that MIA tournament is when it really matters. That's when, as long as you get, as as you get it right that MIA tournament weekend, it's all good, man. That's, yeah, when, sure. that's when it counts for the sure. most. <laughs> for sure. Now, Coach Joseph asked us, man, uh, like recruiting wise, the portal, I, I, it had to be really good for you, man, because I feel like with you getting that not on the ride for your program, guys want to come play for you, man. And knowing that you got a good system, it's fun to play in. So I feel like that portal's going to be good for you if you need a piece on your roster, like for agency almost, of college basketball. So how are you going to use that portal going forward as well, brother? Uh, well, I mean, the portal's going to be a viable option for us. You know, I think it's a viable option for anybody to kind of reload quickly. You know, I think with us, we lose four starters um, from last year's team, but I think that we were able to, you know, probably gain, you know, and we'll see how, you know, preseason shakes out. I don't really, I'm not a big guy on, you know, predicting starters in August, you know, type thing. So we'll see, how, we'll see how it shakes out. But I think that through the portal, we got a lot of potential starters, you know, through the portal to kind of replace those guys um, so that the portal was good to us this year. And, um, you know, I think sometimes you just got to weed out between, um, the players that that want to come because they think that you're, you know, like they, they think that you're, you know, like you're a good program, or the the the, the players that really want to come in their belief to think that you can take them to being great players, you know. But some people just want to come just because they, you know, like you had a couple, of, you know, you had a little success and stuff like that, and they want to be a part of it. But um, you know, we want the guys that that understand our success, but also want to come and try to be, you know, the next great player to come out of you know Norfolk State University, and I think those are I think those are two type of um, recruits, you know, because uh, we were talking to the team the other day that, um, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, want what it look like, but not what it feels like, you know, and stuff. So like, you know, people see like the nets cutting and stuff like that, but then they didn't realize that, okay, this is week one of conditioning. This is what it feels like to get to that end point, you know, and some of those guys, those new guys didn't realize, didn't, didn't, didn't understand what it felt like. They just saw like the, 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 the NCAA tournament stuff and, and, um, and the previous wins and stuff like that, but they didn't realize that those guys who did get those previous wins in the NCAA tournament, you know, they came and they worked their tails off to to, to get that success. So um, some of the guys got a rude awakening, but, you know, it's all good. <laughs> no doubt. Well, you also better promotion about my man, Coach Brown, the associate head coach. Tell us about how, how integral Coach Brown is to your staff, man. Uh, Coach Brown, you know, you like, you know, with a lot of, you know, a lot of staff, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of, you know, crews, a lot of whatever. He's like the OG, you know, he's the oldest one on the staff. Um, and I know, you know, he's not super old, but he's the oldest one on the staff, you know. <laughs> and I think, um, you know, with him, you know, brings a lot of experience with the staff. Um, you know, he has a lot of, uh, you know, he's been, I think he only did like maybe one year not being Division One. If I, if I, I think at Winston Salem he did that or whatever, but the rest of his time he's been Division One. Coach, so he has the most Division One experience out of all of us, really. Um, and he's just like a guy that, for me, you know, he takes care of a lot. He's like the problem solver, like the, the fire, you know, uh, you know, put her out guy or the fire extinguisher or whatever you want to say. Um, and, you know, he does a lot of stuff like that, you know. And, and of course, you know, he's a solid uh, X and O coach, too. But he, he does a lot of um, putting out fires and, and keeping things connected. So um, he was well-deserving of that. And, and hopefully – um, him being a, uh, having an elevated title will will help him in his in his quest uh, to become a Division One or or an, a collegiate head coach. Um, so you know, well, we we hope that 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 helps a little bit.
And coach, the last one I got for you is going back to your roots from New York City, man. Uh, so how seen the Knicks and the Nets been in the playoffs this past year? How cool is that for the city of New York, seeing both of them in the playoffs? And are you a Knicks or a Nets fan? Oh, uh, if you're from New York, you, you're a Knicks fan. Like the Nets are like considered like, that's still like the New Jersey Nets. I don't care where they at now. That's 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 New Jersey Nets. So if you're a true New Yorker, uh, not not one of these new New Yorkers, a true New Yorker, you know, um, you know, true to this, not new to this, right? Is is that you're going to be uh, a Knicks fan? You know, um, so the Nets uh, have a good, you know, obviously a good franchise and, and things like that. And they're playing in Brooklyn, downtown Brooklyn, nice arena and all that great stuff. But um, I think, like I said, for the true New York fans, you want to see the Knicks do good. Um, and the Knicks did do do good last year. I know we got we got bumped a little early, um, but you know by those Atlanta Hawks that I see on your your hat right, right there. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> we were playoff shirts too. Playoff shirts all too, coach. Playoff shirts. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we got bumped. We got bumped by them, but it was good to get the Knicks back in the playoffs. And I think that the Knicks are on the right path to, to start making the playoffs consistently. Um, again, I think uh, Coach Thibodeau is doing a good job. They got some pieces in. You know, Kimba's back home and. You know, looking forward to another good good year uh, this year coming up. Looking forward to being in New York on Christmas for the Hawks and Knicks game. Looking forward to that on Christmas Day. So, we're on the Hawks. I had to work on Christmas in the NFL. Ever. So, it's like, it's like <laughs> hey, I'm not used to working this late this late into the year, coach, as you probably can realize. I'm used to being yeah, used, yeah, to, sure. used, to, used to tanking so much. It's like, I used yeah, to yeah, 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 yeah. No doubt. Well, Coach Joe, thank you for your time as always, brother. I was going to catch up with you, my guy. I hope to see you real soon, man. I hope you hope y'all get your schedule some, somewhere down here in Georgia. It's coming down his way, hopefully. He can get your schedule here real soon. We're playing we play, we play in Atlanta this year. We're playing we play um, at the Hawks uh, with the, the G League Arena, I forgot what it's called. The, the, the Gateway the, Center in College Gateway. Park. Yeah, we're playing there. We're playing against Tennessee State. So um, we're playing like the third game of the season down there, like some H HBCU classic or something like that down there. I'll yeah. be there then. Since I, hey, I'll be there. See you then. When you get to town, yeah. I'll, I'll hit you let you know. I'll come holler at you. I'll take you to get something to eat out here. It's a good All spot right. I got for you, man. All right, for sure. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, down, Coach. Hey, man, you be safe, man. See you, in see you when you come to the town, brother. All right, man. Peace now. Take it easy.